What's up everyone? So this time on Embark with Mark, we're back at it. We're gonna take a look at a Ford fan yet again. Come on, let's get into it. Okay, first things first, let's clear up a few things and get them right out of the way. One, Cube Computer Channel, uh, you are awesome. They gave me a bunch of information uh, showing not where I was wrong in the last video, but I had misspoken and assumed a few things. One of the things I assumed is that that was an actual Ford Explorer fan that I had purchased. It's a Dorman fan and does fit a Ford Explorer, but it's not a Ford Explorer fan. Um, let me let me tell you what I'm what I mean. It's from a Fox body, and they just punched a few more holes in it, and you can tell that because an actual fan only has four mounting holes, whereas the one that I had had eight, uh, so it fit more body, more styles is what it was. Uh, that fan is known not to cool as well and not to pull as, uh, not pull as much air as um, even the stock Jeep fan. So that video uh, that the Ford Explorer fan is not good is not entirely correct. That Dorman fan is not good. So. Uh, if you guys are watching this, don't get that Dorman fan. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install this one. Now this is a uh, Motorcraft factory fan. It's 11 blade, not 10, so we're going up a blade. Um, we're going to see this is supposed to be the end-all be-all of fans. This is supposed to be the one you want. Uh, and with that, we're going to up the ante one more. Uh, I have what's called an anemometer. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, basically, what it allows us to do is measure wind speed. It can measure temperature and other stuff like that. We don't really care. Um, for this test, what I want to do is I want to see how much air is flowing through the grill. So we're going to measure that in miles per hour. Um, and I think that's going to be a good way just to get an idea, just to get a reference on how much air is being pulled through the grill. Um, one of the things, the reasons I want to do this is uh, my Jeep specifically, if you idle it for 15, 20 minutes or you're in stop and go traffic on a really hot day, the temperature starts to creep. Uh, and because I have a manual throttle, I usually just blip the throttle up a little bit to 1000 RPMs and it drops that temperature. But I shouldn't have to do that. I should just be able to idle uh, no matter what in any temperature. And I want to be able to do that. That's the goal of this is to idle at any temperature, keep it low, keep it cool, keep more air moving through the whole system. And also it'll make the AC work a little bit better if it has more air going through it. Uh, with that, let's get into it. The first test we're going to do is we're going to run a few tests on the stock cooling fan. And then we're going to come back and install this guy. Okay, so we just run those tests, and what you saw on the first test, that was the Jeep starting up completely cold, and uh, those were the numbers. I'll flash them on the screen again for you just to make sure we have them correct. I think it was 17 was the highest, and then it kind of dropped down to around 7 or 8. Um, the second uh, clip that we saw, uh, that was the Jeep hot idling, uh, not moving at all, and you can see it's around 5.6.0. Uh, miles per hour and then the third clip that you saw now that clip is a little interesting that's after I drove the Jeep around and made sure everything was completely warm for about 30 minutes and with the AC on that's key with the AC on that last test was and that was idling uh, in one spot with the AC on for about 15 minutes uh, the Jeep started to creep up to 210 Actually, it's a little over 210 uh, because the other tests were at operating temperature. Um, so it started to creep a little over 210, and you can see that the fan speed actually goes down to 5.6. So it's actually pulling less fan, and at that point, or pulling less air. And at that point, that clutch should be fully locked in. Um, I could have a faulty fan clutch. I don't think so because it's new. Um, could be a possibility, but um, I don't think that's it. Uh, however, regardless, we're going to see how much air that this Ford fan actually pulls and if it's a worthwhile upgrade. Um, I'll put these part numbers in the description below just so you can look at them, uh, but uh, this upgrade is about $85 if it will be an upgrade. So let's get into it. Let's get these fans switched out and then we'll run the test again. Thank you. 
Okay, so as you can see, the fan is now in and we are ready to test. So let's get everything set up. Let's get our anemometer in there and we'll test it on startup. Now the clutch should be cold, so we should get a fairly re uh, accurate reading of what it's going to be like uh, when it's cold. Uh, but the engine is warm, so it's probably going to come down pretty quick. Um, however, the engine has been sitting for about two or three hours. Uh, anyway, let's do some testing. Let's see what happens. Come on. Right, guys so there you have it there's the test results um, interesting to note so what do we have we have the fan pulling less air at idle it seems like or at least the air going through is not as quick but it actually stays cooler longer through this test anyway now I'm not co I'm not done um, completing the tests uh, but for the sake of this video unfortunately you know 80 85 is about the temperature here today and that's as hot as I can test it um, because it's starting to cool off however if we get a really hot day um, you can bet it's going to get tested and see what happens. Um, it's just interesting to note that, you know, according to that gauge we have, that the, uh, the speed of the air is going slower through the radiator, but it stayed cooler a lot longer, um, about a half an hour is what I was able to get out of it, where before, about 15 minutes, and you'd see that gauge start creeping over 210, um, and then, you know, I would have to hit the manual throttle to, uh, I'd have to hit the thumb throttle to uh, get the RPMs up to get some air uh, moving through the grill and cool it back down. But with this one, not necessarily the case, even the same temperature. You know, I drive my Jeep every day and I'm really used to how it runs and so I can, I can pretty much tell. However, with the cooling, I don't know like when I'm driving around if some of that is the placebo effect. So I'm gonna roll with this for quite a while and see what happens. I'm definitely keeping my stock set up just in case, but I'm gonna roll with this for a while and I'm gonna see what happens and maybe, um, Maybe it is as great as they say. Maybe it's not. Uh, that's kind of for you to decide right now. Um, for me, I'm I'm caught on the fence. I really am. Uh, it seems like it pulls more air, but there's not any faster. Um, it's according to that gauge. It's slower actually. Maybe I took the measurement in the wrong spot on both fans. Maybe I should have taken it more on the edge. Um, but I don't know. It just it seems like it doesn't pull as much air. But it seems to be cooling better. So that's interesting to know. Uh, anyway, guys, so if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like what's going on the channel, hit subscribe down below. Uh, if you have any comments or concerns or questions or uh, maybe ideas on how I can test uh, this fan or maybe there's other fans you want tested, let me know in the comments. Maybe we can uh, put together a whole series on this because at this point, I'm pretty good at changing them out. <laughs> I've gone through a lot now. Uh, the only thing I can think of uh, next is maybe some metal fan off something to put in there and see what that does. But uh, all right, guys, well, uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you later.